Imagine a world where rulers are not mere mortals, but entities believed to descend from gods, their bloodlines considered divine and supernatural. In the heart of ancient civilizations like Egypt and Sumer, this was not a figment of imagination, but a deeply ingrained belief. These rulers were not just the heads of their kingdoms, they were the living embodiments of the divine. The importance of these sacred bloodlines was paramount. They were the lifeblood of their societies, the chains that linked the terrestrial with the celestial. To preserve these divine bloodlines was to ensure the prosperity and survival of their civilizations. They were the guardians of their people, their connection to the gods and the vessels through which divine wisdom flowed. From the majestic pyramids of Egypt to the fertile valleys of Sumer, these bloodlines were seen as the divine endowments, the bridges between mortals and gods. In the grandeur of ancient civilizations, bloodlines were not just lines of descent, they were divine endowments, a bridge between mortals and gods. Fast forward to the medieval epoch, where the concept of divine right of kings permeated the monarchies of Europe. This era was characterized by a fervent belief in the divine ordination of rulers. Kings and queens were not merely figures of authority, they were, in essence, considered divine entities, appointed by the celestial powers to guide their people. The divine right of kings was more than an abstract concept. It was a tangible force, shaping the political landscape of the period. This belief was so deeply ingrained that it became the bedrock upon which royal authority rested. To challenge the king was not just an act of political rebellion, it was seen as an affront to the divine order itself. But how, you might ask, did the nobility maintain and elevate their divine bloodlines in such a tumultuous era? The answer lies in strategic alliances, often formed through marriages that spanned kingdoms. These unions serve not only to strengthen political ties, but also to preserve the purity and prestige of royal bloodlines. They were the invisible threads, weaving together the fabric of power, prestige, and influence. As we delve deeper into this fascinating period, we uncover the intricate chess game of medieval politics, where every move, every alliance, every marriage was calculated to secure the sanctity and supremacy of the divine bloodline. In the medieval era, bloodlines were the invisible threads weaving together the fabric of power, prestige and influence. Leap into our modern era, where the obsession with bloodlines has subtly transformed yet continues to permeate our societal and political structures. It might be less ostentatious, less celebrated, but the fascination with lineage, with the purity of blood, is as pervasive as ever. Take a look at the elite families and political dynasties of our time, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and several other affluent families, whose names echo through the vaulted halls of wealth and power. These are not just wealthy individuals, but entire bloodlines that have managed to sustain their influence over generations, their legacy as carefully curated as a priceless artifact. Their wealth, their power, their influence, all meticulously preserved and passed down through generations. It's an art in itself, a game of strategy and foresight. They plan for the future, not just in terms of years or decades, but in generations. Their legacy is not just about amassing wealth, but about maintaining their status, their position at the top of the societal pyramid. And it's not just about the elite families. Secret societies, shadowy organizations that have been whispered about for centuries, also play a part in this grand narrative. They too, in their own ways, emphasize lineage, the purity of blood, the continuity of their legacy. But why? Why this obsession with bloodlines? Perhaps it's a quest for immortality, a way to ensure that their legacy lives on. Perhaps it's about maintaining a certain balance of power, a status quo that benefits them. Or perhaps it's just an ancient belief, a relic from a time when kings were gods and blood was divine. In our present day world, the ancient and medieval obsession with bloodlines lives on, clandestinely shaping our society from behind the velvet curtain. It's a shadowy dance of power and influence, a game of chess played across generations. And as we delve deeper into this fascinating world, we'll see just how deep the rabbit hole goes. From ancient civilizations to the present day, the narrative of bloodlines has been a constant, an unbroken chain linking us to our past. This journey through history reveals a continuum of lineage obsession, from divine monarchs to modern elite families. These bloodlines subtly yet profoundly shape our world, 
influencing decisions, alliances and global events. As we stand at the crossroads of history and the future, we must ponder. Are we truly free from the ancient beliefs regarding the sanctity of bloodlines, or do these beliefs continue to subtly shape our world in hidden yet profound ways?